Good afternoon. Good morning. Welcome to Match Day. Uh, we have um, myself, Vince Gansberg, and Ian Barker on. And today is a special guest, uh, Anna Turi. Uh, Anna, can you just say hello so we know we have audio? Hello. Good. So <laughs> I'm going to let Coach Barker kind of run with this more because you two established a relationship before we met at the coaching course mm -hmm. that, that we did uh, seemed like forever ago, but like last fall, I think it was in Kansas City. So thank you very much for being on. And I'm just going to kind of take myself off and like you and Coach Barker have a little conversation okay. and I'll pop in every now and again. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Anna, lovely to see you. Um, I, uh, Vince and I might be two of the only people in soccer in America right now that don't have a podcast, <laughs> but, um, but you are one of the people that does. So um, do you want to tell us a little bit about how old you are and where you live and tell us a little bit about how you came upon the podcast and I'll follow up with a few more questions. Yeah. So my name's Anna Turi and I'm 14 and I live in Iowa near Cedar Rapids. So the podcast kind of started at a tournament and the tournament I was on concussion protocol. So I wasn't doing much and I was just kind of watching a bunch of games. And I really heard a lot of negative and I wanted to highlight the positive in the game. And it just kind of came to me, like, keep the game beautiful. I want to keep the game beautiful in any way I can. And um, so we were talking before. I love the, uh, <laughs> the name of your podcast because it suggests the game is beautiful and you want to maintain that. It's not like make it beautiful again. So clearly you see a lot of positive. So what is it about being a player and a referee that you enjoy the most? I'm, it's hard. I love just the experience and having so many people that you can learn from and playing with friends and just having fun. That's my favorite part about the game, I would say. And then is, can refereeing be fun or is refereeing because you get pocket money? Refereeing for me is a lot of fun. There is some referees that just do it for the money and they don't do a good job. But for me, I really do like being in control of the game and being able to make calls whenever I feel needed. So tell me a little bit about the technology, first of all. I'm really interested in the inspiration and the guests you have, but tell me a little bit about the technology. Um, I can see, I think I can see some of it above your head there that you need. How much time and effort, maybe money, support from your parents did you need to get yourself set up for a podcast? There is a lot that's needed. We have this microphone right here that I use for a home podcast, but when I went to convention as well, it was a lot of figuring out what we needed. We needed to buy a tablecloth and some cards and two microphones that we can use live. So it was a bit of an adjustment and I do need a lot of parent support. My dad actually does do most of the editing and the work, which I feel bad about most of the time, but I, I'll learn eventually, I think. But well, it it's, it's, sorry, it's it great did, that you'll, no, go ahead, sorry. It does take a lot of work and planning ahead. So that's really interesting because you were on the podcast row at convention up till then all your podcasts you hadn't really been on screen right and mm -hmm. now you take the podcast into a an audience environment so what was it like sitting there with people walking by and people could actually see that you really were a five foot tall 14 year old mm -hmm. and, and not some uh you know not some suspicious individual what was it like to go into that live arena it was a little stressful at first having the people walk by and doing it live and having them listen sometimes. A lot of the guests didn't know how young I was and when they showed up, they were really surprised. And there were a few times when I was all alone at the booth and my, my dad was like in the bathroom or something and they thought I was babysitting the, babysitting the booth, I guess. So it was kind of funny. Who does, the, um, who does the editing for the show? Do you do your own editing or do you get help with that? Um, my dad does do most of the editing. Okay. Okay. But when I was on with you, I, I think we had a pretty flawless, there wasn't too many ums or ahs or dead airs. So hopefully we didn't make, uh, make too much work for him. Um, how many, um, how many episodes are you in now? I have done 39 episodes. And where are you at with guests queued up? Do you have a, a number of people coming up? Um, we'll see. I have a few in mind that I've reached out to a bit. Okay, and, and please remember that Vince and I said we would help you if you wanted to get college mm -hmm. coaches or club coaches or any particular type of coaches. So I'm really interested because I'm just this kind of person on um, 
let's I, I want to start with the highlights you've had 39 we'll ca we won't count me so we'll talk about the other 38 can you think of one or two that were particular highlights or thrills for you or went really well or the conversation really got interesting so give us some of the real success stories one of my favorites was with april heinrichs it was like it was the last one at convention and it was on it was one of my best i've ever ever done and it was just a free flowing and it was very fluent and it was just like a conversation and how did you score a woman who was the captain of a world cup winning team and kind of running women's football for the federation how did you score that interview i don't i just emailed her and it was just kind of the people i know too i was able to reach out and get some help reaching out to april well i tell you what that's fantastic because at our convention we talk a lot about how soccer people can talk to soccer people that maybe have had more experience and bigger careers so it's fantastic that a 13 14 year old girl can get a hold of april heinrichs and she responds yeah. so that's great awesome. um so we we don't want to name names necessarily and we don't want to talk about the real disaster or something really bad but do you have a couple of your podcasts that were funny or went sideways or ones you can remember so i'll name names because this was completely my fault oh. like maybe three weeks ago i recorded i had an interview with Haley carter but oh. i didn't record it at all so we had the whole <laughs> interview and none of it was recorded so we had to reschedule it to another day so that was kind yeah, I did. I did one of these webinars uh, by myself because Vince wasn't around, and I talked for twenty minutes, and there was nobody there because my signal had gone down. So I just literally gave a presentation to myself. Um, so I, I can I can relate to that. Vince, you got any questions from the chat yeah. box yet? Yes, we do. Uh, two from Ian. Uh, his name's Ian McCallum. He's from Washington State. So first one is how much equipment is needed to run your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a decent amount of equipment for me. It's not a huge amount, though. Mainly, it's just the microphone that really helps keep it professional and good quality. I record over Zoom, so it's kind of easy to access. But other than that, there's not much. Okay, very good. Do you have, um, do you have any kind of soundboard, or is it is it really just mm -hmm. mic'd into Zoom? It's just mic'd into Zoom. Okay, excellent. So you don't have like padding or anything in your no in your room or anything. That's perfect. Um, and then, uh, what do your friends think of the punk podcast? Um, I'm not really sure. Most of them are really supportive. It's something when I first started, I was a bit embarrassed about it almost, oh. but I've kind of learned like it's something to be proud of. Yes. I don't always like publicly announce it, but the ones that do really know and care about me are really supportive about it. Very good. Thank you. I'm going to pop back up. I've got more questions. But I'll wait to the end. Yeah, no, pop back up when you're ready, Vince. Um, well, 39 is a great number of shows. It, it sort of suggests mm -hmm. you're in this for potentially the long haul. Um, I, I think when we put this on YouTube, somewhere we're going to find you a sponsor and maybe get you, you know, somebody to underwrite your podcast for sure. Um, we were talking with you and your dad a little bit off air. And one of the things we talked about, which I think is worth addressing, was part of the challenges you've had and part of your inspiration for keep keep the game beautiful was the bad experience you had as a referee so i know it's a little bit awkward and painful sometimes but do you want to tell us about that story yeah um so it was i was center refereeing a 10u rec match <laughs> it was for a playoff game and it was it started to get out of control we had parents yelling at me and then I kind of selective memory. I kind of just pushed that to the back of my brain, but I don't remember a huge amount of it. I remember a lot of yelling and every call I made was yell. I was yelled at being a, then I was maybe even like 12. I was a very young girl and I had no, not, not a great amount of experience, but eventually the one parent would not leave. So we had to have the police called to es escort him out. In, un in under 10 rec. Yep. So you had to stop the game. And look, well, let me ask you this. I know your dad would have been there, or your mom supporting you, but how were the other parents with the particularly bad parent? Did they try to calm that parent down or what did they do to, to help or maybe not help the situation? 
there wasn't a huge amount. There was more than one parent too, but the like wife of the main parent that was kind of uh, verbally abusing me was trying to calm him down, but it was kind of hard. But luckily, it was a playoff game. So in the playoffs with AYSO, we have like a tent that referees meet at and coaches and the old trophies. So that field was right by the tent. So I had all the board members on, a on the AYSO board. Like they were all standing behind the parents. So it was helpful to have them there too. And before you did this game, you'd gone through AYSO ref training, right? So you had the basic training. Yep. So what's really interesting and because people hopefully will see this on YouTube and there's a few people live is that when you go to a youth soccer game, the only person there that is guaranteed to have got some training is the referee because mm -hmm. the coaches don't necessarily have to go through training in most levels. And it's really interesting how tough it can be for the refs who at least have gone through for sure some training. So they know mm -hmm. the rules probably better than the uh, U10 rec parents know the rules. And um, we did some research in Minnesota once and we interviewed children and we interviewed coaches and we interviewed parents. And when we asked about rough play, the kids said there was some rough play, but it wasn't too bad. The coaches said there's some rough play and it's a little bit more. And the parents said it's rough all the time and it's unfair. And it was really interesting mm -hmm. because as you know, as a player, you don't feel that injustice the same way as parents, fans do sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so your dad was mentioning you've got an audience. So uh, do you know the countries that have been on your show to, to listen to you? Yeah, I have a list right here. There's Australia, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Spain, and the UK. Wow. That's pretty good. Um, Turi is Turi a Danish name by any chance? It sounds it's, like it might be. It's kind of Finnish, I think. Okay, okay. So you got some, you got some <laughs> Scandinavian connection there. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, and then you have a you have a Twitter account, right? And you have a Facebook yeah. page. So Vince and I will make sure we type that into the box here. What is the at what at Keep the Game Beautiful? Is that at, it? Mm, I'm pretty sure. I'd have to double check. Okay, so people can know. find. It's KTG Beautiful. Okay, KTG Beautiful. Okay, fantastic. Um, so over the course of the 39, not people that you've interviewed, but have you had some feedback from people that have listened in who've said, we like it or given you advice or given you um, suggestions for other guests? What, what's your audience like? Do you have an interaction? Um, I don't have a huge interaction. I have an interaction with a few really constant listeners and a decent amount of them I've actually had as guests on the episode on the podcast but so, almost everyone I have on is like if you need any help anyway we can help you which has been really right. nice yeah that's really nice um I have to give a shout out to somebody I work with who uh, coaches his daughters who are about your age here in Kansas City and he's got a couple of kids in college mm -hmm. Jeff Van Dusen <clears throat> Jeff told me about your podcast and said you should really check it out sometime and then I met you with Vince at a coaching school here in Kansas City when you and your dad were taking the urban coaching diploma. Mm -hmm. um, and then I said, please, will you have me on? And I invited myself and you were nice enough to accept me inviting myself on. So I appreciate that. Uh, Vince, have you got any more from the chat room? Well, yeah. So speaking of uh, inviting people on, who would you love to interview? I've kind of had a few, like, I'd really like to have some big time players like Carly Lloyd has been one of mine and Carson Pickett. Okay. All right. And do you have any plans or strategies on how to get those two? Not yet. I've been a little nervous to reach out, but. Oh. If you've got you. April Heinrichs, who in 1991, when they won the World Cup in China <laughs> in front of hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, if you can get April, um, I think those two stars would be in the same kind of level. So I think you'd be okay. Yeah, I do too. We, we can help you. So let us know. Um, and then uh, Stephanie says, what a great form to impact the game and share positives of what makes the game awesome. So, um, I just have a quick question. So you're in high school. Here you are doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about a career maybe in like media and broadcasting and not really. I've always really been 
I've really loved to spend time around kids and I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher in some short sort, but I help volunteer with the VIP program for very, very important players with for children with impairments. And that's just something that I love to do. And that's what I want to do as a profession. Very good. Is, is the VIP program part of AYSO? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in USYS, they call it top soccer. So sounds like a very similar mm -hmm. program, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe for you then, going on with Vince's question, education and maybe special needs education and that kind of thing? Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Very um, good. Plans for your soccer refereeing and playing? What, what do you, how far do you see refereeing and playing going for you? For playing, I've, I really want to play at college and I know a little bit about where I want to go. But, and then refereeing, I really do want to try and referee at a higher level. I've been doing a lot of webinars, well, listening in and watching webinars and getting extra training so I can referee at the next level. And there's going to be a, a big referee part of our convention in Anaheim. So hopefully um, we can get you to Anaheim for mm -hmm. Podcast Row and you can meet Dr. Joe Matchnick and some of the the legends, the total legends of refereeing. So you you opened the door. Where are you thinking as a freshman in high school? Where are you thinking college might you might like to go? Um, so I guess I'll just say I really want to go to UW, UWSP. It's just kind of... I went and visited an ID camp, and that was just where I wanted to be. Uh -huh. And I loved it there, and my grandparents had been married there, so it just felt like home. So UW, Wisconsin, Stevens Point, right? Yep. You want to be a pointer. Is Sarah still the coach? I think she might no. be. Oh, no, not anymore? Okay. I am. I coached in the Wisconsin system with Madison, so I'm very familiar with Stevens Point. It's a beautiful part of the country, northern Wisconsin mm -hmm. or mid to northern Wisconsin. And they actually have some programs, right, in the academic academic things you're interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so they have their Division Three football soccer, and they actually have those um, education special mm -hmm. need type programs. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a great match. Well done. Um, Division Three, I can tell you, having coached it, is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, in Division Three, soccer can be um a lot of fun not that it isn't at division one but it's when you don't have scholarships and things it becomes a little different vibe so it really fits your keep the game beautiful uh, idea vince you got any uh, a couple of closing questions yeah no no um so i don't know if you know who one of the famous uh alum of wisconsin stephen point is he's a mm. former basketball player his name was terry oh. Porter. but terry uh, Porter. anyway um no, he I don't retired have... before Anna was born. Oh, right? <laughs> way long, way long, way long. But he, he's, he's, I think he's the only one that actually made it into the pros and he had a really good career. Um, no, good for you. You know where you want to go and, and you're so impressive uh, just to listen to you and, you know, and, and just you do this really because you just like to do it. Right. And mm -hmm. so it, it's definitely more internal and, you know, intrinsic versus extrinsic. You're not looking for anything out of it, which my goodness, if we can get more young adults to do that, it'd be wonderful. Um, so okay. Anna, we're gonna we're gonna take the recording and we're gonna give it to our women's group here at United Soccer Coaches. And I'm gonna share it with a friend of mine who is a PhD with the Girls and Women's Sports um, Foundation at the University of Minnesota, so she can see it. And I have to give you a shout out because um, when I asked you and your dad if you would come on, um, your dad said, well, I'll talk to Anna and we'll make sure it's okay. And I said, well, if, if Anna would like us to get our friend Samantha Snow to interview her. So there was a, you know, we had our, one of our women coaches and Dan said, your dad said, no, she's very happy and brave enough to talk to you and Vince, which can be scary for some yeah. people. So, <laughs> headed men. That's not yeah. Yeah, scary. But uh, uh, you, you, you're an inspiration. You do a great job with your podcast. You've done a great job being a guest, but your podcast is of the 20 or 30 I've been on, it's very much in the very top end of those. So kudos to you and thank you for being here. I'll leave it to Vince to wrap. No, again, Anna, thank you so much for your time and uh, let us know how we can help. And mm -hmm. we're more than happy happy to help. And uh, for those of you uh, that are gonna maybe join us later, uh, Ian and I are gonna be talking about just the future of our coaching education programs. And 
So we're going to discuss a little bit of those changes. But thank you again, Anna. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Coach Barker, for setting this up. Thank you. All right. Had a great job. Good to see you.